Hi everyone, Stepan here, back to recording after a while, but it's gonna be regular now, I had some stuff going on, and I have a lot of games to show you. So first of all, I'm going to continue covering the CES with the Open tournament that I played back in back in February, actually. And this is my round six game against Filip Cvitkovic. Uh, we played twice before, I beat him in the first game quite convincingly, and then he destroyed me in the second game even more so. So this was our third encounter. I should mention that I won when I had white and he beat me when I had black, so statistically the advantage was on his side. He's a very strong player and very aggressive. Okay, uh, he started pawn d4. Uh, d5, c4, c6, we have the Slav, knight of 3, knight of 6, and now e3. And I played bishop f5, which is the main move. If you can get away with getting your bishop outside of the pawn chain, you should do so. Um, if, I should mention, if there's a knight on c3 instead of a knight on f3, this doesn't work because of cd, cd, queen b3. And there's too much pressure down this diagonal. But in this case, bishop f5 is fine. Uh, he played knight c3, e6. Okay, and now knight h4 is the main move, trying to punish bishop f5. And there are two ways to play. Uh, you can play bishop e4, which I used to play. And after f3, bishop g6, queen b3, queen c7, bishop d2, bishop e7, uh, white aims to castle queen side quickly, so take stakes and castles. And this gets, gets very complicated. Uh, to me, it was never really clear where the black king belongs, and I don't feel comfortable in these positions. So I played bishop g6, which is just you know, take my bishop, you're gonna take it anyway, uh, so, the, and it is the main move, it's fine. Bishop d2, knight bd7, normal development, g3, which is the main line, and now black could play bishop b4, uh, which goes into a quick draw, or on the highest level, it should be a quick draw, bishop b4, queen b3 takes, bishop takes and knight e4, and white really cannot afford to move this bishop again, and even if white did move the bishop, where would the bishop go? Uh, after bishop b4, I could consider something like c5 or a5. So after bishop g2, black just takes the knight, and after bc3, queen c7, it should be very, very, very equal. Okay, but I wanted to keep some tension, and I played bishop e7, uh, which is fine. Here he surprised me, uh, usually, and I know this position still, the move played most frequently here is b3 and black continues e5, and the position gets very complicated, cd, uh, ed, ed, knight d5, knight d5, cd5, and now white does have the bishop pair, but this probably is the only useful diagonal for the light squared bishop. Uh, this pawn can be well defended with something like knight f6. And in the future, when my knight possibly jumps into e4, there's a possibility to transfer the pawn structure into something like an isolated pawn for, for white and uh, 4 to 3 for black with a potential pass pawn down the e-file. So it could be interesting. But here he played the first move, I don't know, cd. And of course I took with the e-pawn. And now we have a standard Kalsbad pawn structure, but there's a pawn on g3, meaning that uh, the same idea probably isn't going to be as powerful uh, if the bishop isn't supporting it. And also b4 will take some time to prepare because the bishop is awful on d2. So if something like rook b1, uh, I can probably just ignore it, allow b4, or I can consider a5. Uh, so. I, I don't know. Anyway, he played bishop d3, which was confusing to me. Uh, I mean, if you play g3, why why not play bishop g2? And if you want to play bishop d3, why not play it instead of g3? I mean, it's not like I did something unexpected. He played g3 and then took on d5. He could have just as well taken on d5 and played bishop d3. So, okay. Now, uh, I, this kind of tension... <clears throat> is very common. I mean, obviously the best move is to castle for black. But I want to see what white does. And I don't want to be the first to castle, because then maybe h4. Okay, before I show you what I did, I would like to thank uh, Chessbook who are sponsoring today's video. Okay. Chessbook is a great tool for building your repertoire. It allows you to import it either by hand or by using studies. 
and it allows you to practice your avatar. So what I did here <clears throat> is I opened up a new Leeches account just for this, just for building my repertoire and for showing you how uh, convenient it is. I'm going to be showing it. I'm going to be showing you the process throughout a couple of videos. So first of all, let's connect that account so we can connect to our Leeches account. My account is called uh, HPY book. So let's authorize that. Okay, so now every game I play on that account is going to be uh, recognized by Chessbook and it's going to be finding uh, gaps in my repertoire based on the games I play. And I plan to play just the repertoire I'm about to import. So I also created uh, a study uh, on the symmetrical English. I'm going to be creating uh, a full English repertoire uh, for white and, and a lot of stuff for black. But for now, let's import uh, the symmetrical English. So you can start building by hand or you can import. I'm going to just import a PGN file uh, because that's easier for me. Okay, submit. Okay, and now it's going to uh, recognize that I have some repertoire for white. You can see that it's 7% complete. Now I can practice those moves. For black, I can also uh, import or, or, or add uh, my repertoire by hand. Now the biggest thing uh, about Chessbook is that it tailors your repertoire uh, based on your rating. So how many times have you learned 20 moves of, I don't know, uh, the Chigorin Roy Lopez, and then because you're 1200 on Lee Chess, people don't even know what the Roy Lopez is, and they play random stuff. This way, based on your games, it's going to uh, fill in the gaps in your knowledge based on what your opponents play, and that's, that's a great thing. So what you can do is you can select your rating uh, and tell Chessbook how strong you are. So I'm going to say, well, I'm about 2300 on Leeches, so I'm going to do this. Okay, now let's go back and let's practice those moves. You can also, after you've had your account for a while, which I assume many of you do, you can view your performance by opening, which is a great thing, uh, and you can see uh, your, your weakest areas. Now, you can uh, practice the moves by going through everything you imported, your entire repertoire. Uh, you can go through a specific line or you can go to your biggest gap or the recommended move. So let's say uh, I go here and then here and then knight c3 or bishop g2. Uh, I would do this for my entire repertoire. Now I've just started the process. So in tomorrow's video, uh, I'm going to be going a bit more in depth because I'll have more stuff lined up and hopefully I'll be playing some games on this account HBY book and I'll actually be making some mistakes so you're going to make you're going to get more data but this is the the start of the process if you're interested in chess book uh and trust me it's I I've been using it for opening prep for two tournaments now and it's very convenient you can find the link uh in the description below uh, the basic version is free but what I'm using is the premium version uh where you get unlimited moves to import and that's only for dollars a month uh, so consider uh, subscribing thank you very much let's go back to my game with philip okay so i wanted to wait i wanted for him to commit his king first let's say hypothetically i castle and he plays h4 this is already uncomfortable in my opinion uh it's not like the white king is unsafe in the center uh g4 is coming and h5 is coming and what do i do let's say I don't know, let's just play random moves. Queen c7, g4. And what do I do? h5 is coming, I cannot prevent it. So no, I, I, I didn't want to go in for this. I played rook c8, which is a waiting move. It's not the best move, it doesn't make too much sense, but in the future I may want to play c5, so okay. He waits, queen e2. Now I have to wait again, and I really couldn't find a good move. I really don't want to go queen c7 because of rook c1 and ideas with knight b5 or knight d5. So I played a6, and in many positions where I move my c pawn, <clears throat> having the b5 square protected is, is a good idea. And now it's really tough for white to wait. Also a6 is a useful move in the event of castle's queen side, because now I, I just go b5 and a5 and a4 and b4. And I also have knight b6, knight c4. 
ideas. So after a6 headed castle queens uh, kingside, sorry, I followed because now obviously h4 isn't scary. He played rook ad1, I played rook e8. And what you're about to see in this game uh, is well, I should say that we were both winning at several points. And it was so complicated, and especially him, he was in time trouble by the end. I, I didn't have a lot of time either. That Calculating all of that would have been very hard, if not impossible, at least for me. Okay, he played bishop b1. I played knight f8, I want to go knight e6, knight g5, and I want to target these weaknesses. If if you play g3 and you don't have a light squared bishop, then a, a knight on g5 could create some problems. Queen d3. Okay, uh, I was expecting something like h4, h5, trying to weaken this pawn, but that's still f far away. So knight e6. And f3. f3 was kind of strange. I mean... You're weakening even more squares. In particular, you're weakening the e3 pawn. So now my plan was to put pressure on g3 and to put pressure on e3. So first of all, I played queen b6. I want to prevent any ideas of e4 and it's with tempo on b2. So why not? b3. I don't think b3 is a particularly useful move. I may have bishop b4 or bishop a3 in the future. Uh, I played rook cd8 trying to prepare c5 in some positions. Uh, if he doesn't do anything now, let's say king g2, then c5 does become very interesting. Uh, and for example, takes, takes, and I can follow that up with d4 and start breaking things up. So he played knight a4. Uh, queen c7, b4, I agree with that, preventing c5, playing for knight c5. Bishop d6, uh, king g2 played. Uh, he He's stronger if you look at the ratings, so bishop g3, hg3, queen g3 is just a draw, so he played uh, king g2. I played knight h5, reinforcing the threat, and he played bishop e1, defending. And now I want to pile up on the e3 pawn. I mean, he's going to have a bishop on f2, but there's going to be a ton of weaknesses. So rook e7, knight c5, of course I, I don't take, allowing him to put pressure on my b7 pawn. Rook d8, okay, bishop f2 forced. Uh, I should mention that there's a trick in this position uh, where if he ever tries to chase my knight away I just have knight f4 winning the game on the spot winning the queen so my knight on h5 is pretty safe uh, I can also try undermining that square but it doesn't work if he can trade knights so if I go bishop f4 he just takes the knight on e6 first of course if he takes here then it does work but he takes on e6 but that's a pattern that exists in this position anyway i played rook d8 he played bishop f2 and now i wasn't really sure what to do i knew that i had to have an advantage and that's true i spent a lot of time analyzing this game afterwards i, I think i've never analyzed a game longer uh, ever before it, it was hours i don't know how many uh, i played f5 here which doesn't seem like a bad move and it loses uh, a part of black's advantage according to the engine but it's it gives white a lot of play so instead i should have gone knight g5 and let's say rook d1 uh b6 knight a6 queen c8 is interesting because this is a double attack so okay still let, let's assume that that they take i mean and, and let's say g4 and now bishop f4 this is very interesting. And if if my knight is taken, then queen h3 is mate in two. Uh, so the knight cannot be taken. Uh, what else? Uh, let's say queen d2. Let's say, uh, I don't know. Let's say a4, a random move. Then bishop e3. And if bishop e3, just rook e3. And if rook e3, then knight f4 check. And if queen e3, I, I take. So this was a very complicated line. I saw knight g5, I didn't see all of that, especially I, I, I didn't see b6. b6 never crossed my mind. But knight g5 to increase the pressure was, was interesting. Anyway, I played f5. Uh, and still I was hoping for g4 at some point, 
the, the same trick I showed you. He played queen c2, I played knight f6. Rook c1, knight g5. Okay, and in this position, he blundered. He played h4. Pause the video, and this is basically white, uh, black to play and win. Okay. This never crossed my mind, I'm very sad to say. I played knight f7, but black is winning after knight takes f3. Uh, I mean, the knight has to be taken. Uh, what else can you do? Uh, I don't know. The engine says king f3. If Let's find another move. If, for example, a4, then bishop takes c5. Uh, let's say b takes c5, knight takes h4, uh, g takes h4, and knight g4. And this is losing, because on bishop g3, knight e3 check. And on rook h1, rook takes e3. And again, nothing can be captured, and I'm threatening to take and go queen g3, or if queen takes rook e2. Okay, so knight f3, king f3, and what's the point? Well, the point is bishop takes. And... If the, the, if the bishop is taken, then it's easy. I just go rook e3 and it's going to be mate in 2 or 3 uh, with queen g3 check. And if bishop g1, then knight g4, just increasing the pressure. And the engine plays e4 here uh, as the best move and just bishop h2 with the threat of queen g3. In any case, it's a peace sacrifice that's so winning that white just doesn't have a defense. I'm basically playing with a queen, bishop, knight, and two rooks versus bishop, rook, and queen. Uh, it's it's too much. But I didn't see that. I played knight f7. Uh, he played knight d3. Uh, I went knight h5. Again, putting pressure over here. And f4 seems forced. Now, I could have considered knight h6 or knight f6. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do. I played knight f6. Obviously, these two squares are mine, and I am going to play knight h6 at some point in the future. Knight e5, I have to take that. I cannot live with this knight, and g6 is hanging, so takes, takes. Knight e4, uh, queen b2 was played, <clears throat> and this, even though I was winning at some point, uh, is my biggest mistake of the game. Uh, I think this is worse than not taking on f3. This is just... There's no excuse for for a move like this. I took on f2, uh, which is absurd. Uh, I was afraid of him taking on e4. But if he takes on e4, I take with the d pawn and it's, it's perfectly fine. He's still playing with this idiot bishop. So, for example, if I play knight h6 and he takes and I take... Where is this bishop ever going to develop? I mean, it's going to take a million moves for it to get to c5. And I just have the g4 square. So that was stupid. Anyway, I took on f2. Rook f2 and knight h6. Uh, he played rook uh, d2. Yeah, he played rook d2. I played knight g4. <clears throat> he played rook d3. Queen b6, he has to defend the pawn, so queen d2. And now there's a ton of shuffling our pieces around. So the game went through e6. Nothing's going on, basically. Uh, he's threatening to go a4, b5, but not really. He's threatening to go h4 or g h5 or g4, but not really. And I'm not threatening to do anything. Uh, the best idea I have is to go a5 and to trade off a couple of pawns and into a draw. So I ended up in a position where I basically don't have a winning idea. And he has a few. They don't work, but he has them. Uh, so knight h6, we just shuffle. I'm not going to explain these moves because there is no meaning behind them. He can never play b5 because I infiltrate down the a file and I can I can play a5, but I don't have to because he isn't doing anything. So I was basically waiting for us to draw the game. We keep shuffling our pieces. Uh, nothing's going on. He played king h1, finally preparing to push g4. 
uh, it, at, at, at many points I could have gone a5. So I could have gone a5 here or in the previous move. And now finally uh, he plays g4, which is well, the only way to make progress. As I said, if, if he plays b5, then I, I just have too much activity. Down the a file, I have rook a3 followed by rook a8, and I'm probably winning. I'm not sure, but I would definitely like to be black. So, he played g4, and of course I took fg4, bishop g4, and I just played king g8, getting out of the way of this pin. He played rook d2. And I just took on b4. I mean, why not? I have queen b4, queen e4. One of the rooks is going to be pinned. Uh, so, so why not? I saw the critical line. And I wonder what you would do. I, I mean, if, if you want, try to calculate this out. This is extremely complex. Uh, and I spent some time figuring it out. And I got it partially right. So, queen b4. Bishop e6 check, you can go king h8 or king h7. King h8 seemed safer to me. And h5, of course. Now, uh, queen e4 is forced, and he, of course, blocks with the rook. Now, what would you do here? If I told you this was black to play and win, could you find the win for black? Uh, instead of winning, I got a losing position in a single move, after what I thought was a forced line, I did not even consider the winning option. Let me show you the win first. This was too much for me. It never even crossed my mind. Uh, so the winning move is g5. And let's, let's look at the engine recommendation. The engine recommends queen d4, which is obviously losing because of gf, queen e4, d4, sorry, uh, d4 and I, I don't know ef4 rook f4 and white just resigns i have too many pawns and my king is perfectly safe there's there's nothing going on so on g5 let's look at fg5 which is normal knight f5 threatening knight g3 uh or knight e3 both are fine so bishop takes f5, seems forced. Rook takes f5, again, you don't want to unpin, seems forced. Now what does white do here? This position is minus 5 for black. Uh, the threat is, there are many million threats. Rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, uh, rook f2, uh, rook af8, uh, you name it. That you, you can do whatever you want. Uh, the engine plays rook h3 here. I, I would never consider rook h3 with white, but okay, let's say queen e2, which seems slightly more normal. Then rook f8, and again rook h3 freeing up a square for the king. Rook g5. I mean, it's it's all collapsing. The engine plays e6 here. Okay, just giving up a pawn. Uh, I mean... It, it's all gone. You can take here actually because if if uh, rook takes g5, then queen takes h3. So on g5, fg5, knight f5, bishop f5, rook f5, the best line is rook h3 and now just rook f8. And after king h2, queen takes e5 check and white can resign. So uh, I didn't see g5. I saw rook a8. Okay. And now white is winning. <sighs> okay, so hg6. I take my piece temporarily, rook e6. Uh, rook takes h6, pawn takes, g7, king g8, uh, gf, queen, king f, everything is forced, and queen g4. I saw this far, and I figured, okay. I mean, the rook is pinned. I'm not losing. Uh, I have an extra pawn. Seems good. I saw this before I played rook, uh, before I played queen takes b4. Okay, I, I got this far. And I have to play king e7. Uh, I don't have any other moves. I, I get mated on anything else. Okay, so queen g7. So what's the big deal? King d8. Queen f8 check played. Rook e8. Okay, and this just seemed... Okay, white doesn't have anything. And, you know, it's... Probably a draw, but I'm the one playing for a win. That's how bad my assessment was uh, because of this pinned rook. The, the, 
the truth is uh, this king can go to h2 at any point and then the rook drops down and the best I can hope for is a perpetual but it doesn't exist now Philip made a mistake here he went queen c5 after which I went queen f3 and that's just a draw uh, the game went king g1 queen d1 uh, and I had a win at some point later but it should be a draw let me just show you what he should have done Instead of queen c5, he should have gone queen f6 check. I have to go to c8. Uh, he plays queen f7, attacking my rook. I go rook d8, and now he unpins. And now suggest a move for black. There are no moves. Black just resigns. If king b8, for example, then rook g7. And that's it. I don't have a perpetual. Um, I, I just lose. I lose my rook or I get mated. So... He played queen c5, uh, queen f3, and we both assumed that this was just a draw. However, after I kept checking him, at some point he blocked with the rook. And now there's a win for me. Uh, I should mention that we repeated queen f1, queen d1, queen f1, queen d1, and the game just ended in a draw. So the game went like this. A rook e2, and, and we agreed to a draw. But... And I mean, this is extremely advanced. Uh, if you want, uh, try to play for a win with black. The winning move is astonishing to me. Uh, uh, the idea is astonishing. So you go king c8. And one of the main ideas of this is to free up the d8 square for the rook at some point uh, and to play d4 if you can. But that's not the only idea. Uh, there are other ideas in this position. The engine plays queen d6 here, which I, <clears throat> I, I don't understand. But okay, well, let's say queen d6. Uh, or let's play a normal move. If something like here, then, then rook g8, and that's obvious. So there really are not too many normal moves. So okay, queen d6. And now queen h1 check, rook g2, queen f1 check, rook f2, queen h3 check, king e2, queen g4 check and king d3, okay? And now we go queen f5. And after queen f5, if the king drops back to e2, there is rook d8. And the queen moves, we go d4, and it, it's it's obvious that this is easily winning. Uh, so that's one of the ideas of king c8. And after queen f5, if the king goes to c3, which is better, then again we go rook d8, or rook e6, but let's say rook d8. Queen c5, d4 check. And after e d4, again, we're opening up the position to our advantage. And this should be winning. Uh, the rook needs to be saved. So let's say rook d2. We just take on f4. This pawn is marching up the, down the board. This king is unsafe. I'm not saying I would have won this. It doesn't seem simple at all. But it's winning chances for black. So we both missed the win twice. Uh, we ended up drawing the game, which is... Uh, statistically a fair result uh, it, it was an extremely messy game I mean and I should mention that we were the last board to finish how many moves was this this was almost a hundred moves we were completely exhausted and yeah it was a draw uh, <laughs> let me know what you think uh, thank you for watching stay tuned for more chess bye bye